Okay. <laughs> no, that's alright. <laughs> I am redeemed. How many is redeemed in there? Yes. Let's give God praise. Our everything. And now let me tell you something. There's so many people in here that ain't even got him. They don't even know who he is. They don't know who he is. I've heard about him because he's been around. You're going to hear about him because when you dead and gone, this is still going to be living. Amen. You hear me? It'll never die. It's the living, living Word of God. If you don't know God as your Lord and Savior, you need to get it. I don't know what you got to do. You got to pray. That's between you and Him. But let me tell you something. The altars are open. And if you want to change life, you need to get to the altar and ask God, Lord, help me. You are my shepherd. You are my king. I need help because everything I've ever done ended me up in jail. Ended me up paying money because I done busted somebody in the head with a stick and had to pay restitution. Cheating people. Stupidness. All drugged out. Thought I was doing something. Used to at first. It started out good. I was making money. But then it got to the point where I couldn't make no money. Going home every time. It started off fun. The Bible says sin is fun for a season. But what does it turn into? Misery. It turns into depression. It turns into anxiety. It turns into when you look in the mirror, you hate yourself. It turns into suicide thoughts. It turns into paranoia. It turns into this misery loves comfort. These people that's out there in the world that's on this, they want you miserable as they are. They'll do anything they can do to get you miserable. They call in on you, make up lies on you, tell things on you. I kick people out here, they put on Facebook, I'm not sorry, I said so be an answer. I don't care what they say, man. We do what we do down here for love. We want to see men change their life through the love of Jesus Christ. We want to see people that come to church here come to have a good church, have to eat and fellowship. Now, ain't it fun just to come down here and, and, and party in Jesus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's He's our shepherd. He's our shepherd. You know, he appoints people to be shepherds of each church. Now, I'm the shepherd of this church. Y'all are the flock. A lot of times people want to bash on me and you know, please take up for take up for me. Okay? I take up for y'all. I do, man. I go through a lot of stuff. Y'all got people down there. I mean, leave them alone. They ain't going to go. They go. Well, they messed up one time. You shouldn't let that happen. Well, I, leave them alone. I know where they at. I, I run that show. I had the police tell me, you shouldn't let one stay if you're going to kick those out. I said, you don't worry about that. I'll run this place. He got mad. Probation called me up, told me one time we had a conflict. Harvey Black. I said, Harvey, right, look, don't you run the probation office? He said, yes, sir. I said, I run the labors of the field. I appreciate it if you don't call in here and tell me I don't run this anymore. Boy, he got mad. But you know what? They still send people down here, people that nobody else can take. But that's okay. Because we're going to grow on into different things. Praying about a building, praying, talk to a man today about it. I wish to God we could get it. Y'all keep praying about it. Another building, a men's facility. So I'm pulling it out of here. And then I'm gonna keep me about two or three rooms here and put women here. Do a women's ministry here. We ain't gonna do about ten women. I think that's about all we have. They rough. I have to have somebody on shift all the time. But I want you to know, everybody here, that Jesus Christ, we can't all make contact with everybody here. Jesus Christ loves you. 
Jesus Christ loves you. He loves you. He loves you, Paul. He thanks you for what he do. Doug, with your bald head, he still loves you too. He loves you. He loves you. He sent you here for a reason. He's going to straighten your life out. He loves you. He loves you. Tanya, he loves you. She's my bass, the Holy Ghost girl. Nate, he loves you. Tony, he loves you. I don't know how he's going to work this thing out, but he's going to work it out. You're going to be in the ministry full time. If we get that building up there, you ain't going to have to go pipe fit no more. One day we're going to be down here. The Lord's going to bless us with money. It might be through transition. I don't know, but I'm going to be praying about that. Karen, he loves you. He loves you too. Now, you know, as a pastor, as your shepherd, I'm supposed to tell you about your shepherd. I'm just a little old shepherd down here. And, and, and hey, I'm going to say, I, I never dreamed that I'd be over a church. If you told me that 10 years ago, what I said to you? Well, you know, bump. You know, bump. No, he, he wasn't even thought it. You know, we like to come down here and have fun. And I want you to be a part of the service. When I preach to you, I want you to be part of it. And I want you to know exactly what I'm talking about. I want you to study when you go home what I'm talking about. Because I want you to read it for yourself. There are false doctrine people that preaches for money are wolves. We're going to read a little bit about this, about the shepherds. They don't care nothing about their flock. I want to see that. I love each and every one of you. God put it in my heart that if I can man up and say that I love you. Sometimes I don't like some of the stuff you do, but I'm going to work with you to try to help you get to a point where you can have a decent life, where you can have a house, where you can pay your own power bill, and where you can grow into a what the God, what the devil stole from me. He stole 32 years of my life. I mean, you know, and I, I, I don't want to see him do you like that. He stole a lot of y'all's life. Get it back. Take it back. You got the power to take it back with the Holy Ghost. You can't do nothing if you ain't got God. If you don't know God, you can't do nothing. He's going to keep stealing and stealing and putting you in jail. But finally, he's going to wake up and you're going to be in hell one day. Then you're going to be bad shape. Then you're going to say, I wish I would listen to Vernon because he tried to tell me. I've had enough hell here on earth. I don't want no more. You go to hell. Let me tell you something. you got a choice. God give you a free will. Eternal punishment or eternal life. That's on you. I can I can grab you in the head lock, bring you up here to the altar, but I can't make you receive salvation. And it's a free gift. Let's talk about the shepherd for a minute. John 10.10 10 is where we at. When you get there, holler amen. 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 Y'all there that quick? John 10.10 10. Jesus is a good shepherd. Guys, give me a lot of reading. I, 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 I need one of them giant print Bibles. Get on up here close where I'm reading. Right. Father God, I come to you today. Lord, and I ask you to anoint me today. Lord, I, just move me out of the way and move into me. Lord, I ask you to anoint the ears, anoint each person here that they'll receive the message that you've given me tonight because, Lord, I can't give these messages. You have to give them to me. And, Lord, I just thank you because I, I, this thing got to the point where I, I can preach it. Somebody can tell me five minutes and I can just come up with something. You'll give me something that quick. And, Lord, I thank you for it. And, Lord, I just pray that you'll touch somebody here tonight because there's some hurting people here. They act like they ain't, but they really are. And they need you in their life. They need to surrender. Not what the bad, but they need to surrender the whole life. That's where our problem is. The Lord, we love you. We'll give you the praise. We'll give you the honor. We'll give you the glory. Jesus is a good shepherd. 
Verse 10, verse 1. Chapter 10, verse 1. I assure you, anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief or a robber. For a shepherd enters through the gate. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name, leads them out. After he gathers his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they recognize his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't recognize his voice. Those who heard Jesus use the illustration don't understand what he meant. So he explained it to them. I assure you, I am the gate for the sheep, he said. All others who come before me were thieves and robbers. But through me, through me, you will be saved. Wherever they go, they will find green pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose is to give you life in all its fullness. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run. Listen to this. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. Let me tell you something. That means if somebody in a church has a hard time, they'll run out. You got me? Somebody that's real is going to stay. No matter how thick it gets, no matter how much you talk about it, don't matter. They're going to stick here. Let me tell you something. You can't drive me out of this church. You can't do it. Because I've worked from day one to build this church. And it ain't about me, but I've worked here and worked here. And there's a lot of people that's worked here. Pops has worked here. Doug's worked here. Tony, Nate, a lot of us that do things here. This is what we do. God has put this in our heart. He will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will leave the sheep because they ain't his. And he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them. And, this, <coughs> and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he is merely hired and has no real concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep. And they know me, just as my father knew me. And I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. <coughs> I have other sheep too that are not in the sheepfold. I must bring them also. That means churches have sheep too. Well, he calls a sheep. Does that make sense? We are the sheep here. I have other sheep too, and they are not in the sheepfold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, and they will be one flock with one shepherd. That's the day Jesus comes. We'll all be one flock. You got me? The Father loves me because I lay down my life that I might have it back again. No one can take my life from me. I lay down my life voluntarily for I have the right to lay it down when I want and also the power to take it again. <coughs> For my Father has given me this commandment. When he said these things, the people were again divided in their... What's that word? About him, I'm going to skip it. Some of... Huh? Opinions, yeah. Opinions about him. And some of them said, He, he has a demon. Or he's crazy. When listened to a man like that, others said, this doesn't sound like a man possessed by demons. Can demons open the eyes of the blind? Jesus is the shepherd. Do you know how he talks to you? 
Do you know how he talks to you? Listen to me. Me and you's talking right now. He talks to you from the heart out. You ever done something wrong and, and something inside of you said, man, I know that wasn't right. That's God. That's God. That's the way he talks to you. People, people mislead you by saying, well, what me and God talk. I do talk to God. I've been driving down the road. God, I, I need this. Lord, like with churches, in, we need a blessing. And You know something? Every time I pray for something, he gives it to us. I mean, you don't give me more. And it's going to come there. It's going to come one day where we have a staff. We can pay a staff. And, <coughs> and, and we can do some things. But he talks. He don't. I mean, well, I talk to Jesus. Yeah, you talk to Jesus. But when you talk to him, he, he, he puts things in you. He puts things in me to, to do what we do here in the soup kitchen. Let's, let's open this up. Let's open up a men's rehab. Let's open up a women's rehab. God, who do you think done that? Me? Do you think I done that? God did it. God planted that inside of me to do it. He planted it in Tyus Butler to do it. He planted it in Tony Keaton. I know he can't come help with it, but one day he will. As long as he keeps doing his part in the service, we're fine. But I want you to know that you got a shepherd that loves you. And you need him I can't I can't there's not enough words to tell me to put in our vocabulary how good God is I'm going to tell you something I want, I want you to put, to put this in your mind if you're not saved I want you to start going to the altar praying to God for 30 days if you don't like it you go right back where you was at one day. <coughs> Amen? So, that's a challenge that I'm giving everybody here today. That if, if, if you got problems in your life, you got things you just can't get together, give it to God. He don't want you to email Him on a computer. <coughs> he likes, the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue will profess. Amen. And that's, that's, just, that's the way it is. Let me tell you something. If you'll ever figure out that God is the way, the truth, and the life, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Because it's all about Him. Everything is about Him. Everything that goes on is about the Lord. Everything you are about, it, everything you do, you're not here for, you're not here for just by getting out. you here because God sent you here. I'm here tonight because God sent me here. you here because God sent you here. And we got friends that's going to hell and if we don't get out here and work and do something, there's going to be a lot of people end up in hell. We can save some folks if everybody get off their tails and go do it. I mean, when you out or call some people, get on the phone, get this church full. Let's have some Holy Ghost parties down here. And I promise you, nobody will, will... I went to a church when I was 14 years old. Philip Jones and I, you know him? Remember him? His daddy was a holiness preacher. And I went to the church over there, old Albert Strickland's old church. And I was going to pray that I could see my daddy. I ain't seen him in about five or six years. And you know, the Lord was digging at my heart and I really didn't want to go up to the altar. But I went up to the altar. Man, when I went up there, these people come up there and grabbed me, shook me, held me hand. They scared me today. I run out of there. I promise you, that will not happen here at this church. Because if it does, I'll stop it. I'm the head of this church. And if that starts, if you're willing to walk up here and let them lay hands on you, if you fall out on the floor, that's on you. Me, I choose to just tell the truth, walk up and get on my knees and pray because I'm more Baptist than any. Well, I'm, I'm a Jesus freak, okay? I'm just a Jesus freak. I ain't never seen in the Bible where it talks about being slain in the Spirit. If you can find it, I want you to show it to me. 
But I ain't knocking it. I'm not knocking nobody with what they believe and what they do. If they want to run around church, that's fine. Don't let it bother you. If they pick you out, so hey, you come up here, I'll step in and say, no, nah, we don't do that here. But if you want to step up and go to the altar, I might walk up and lay my hand on you and pray. But other than that, there's nobody going to bother you. Nobody going to scare you. God, I serve, don't scare people. That's right. He wants you to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. The one-on-one, <coughs> the one-on-one thing, and just build it and build it. Get off the milk, get on the meat. Then you can understand laying on of hands, anointing with oil. But you don't understand that right now. Some of you do, but some of you don't. Huh? Yeah, I don't even talk about that. That was something else. Hey, there's, there's a bunch of churches out there. But we want to keep it simple because God is simple. He's powerful, but He lays the Word out simple. He is your shepherd. He is your Lord. He is your Savior. He is your King. Without Him, you are a dead man walking. Real men serve God. Real men can't be parents if they're not serving God. If a man gets to a point where he can't pay his bills, can't support his family, got the devil's guy. The devil's just stole his life from him. A man's supposed to be the head of the house. If a woman has to be, something's wrong. Unless she's single or her husband got killed. But then churches are supposed to help with us. We do. If, some, if you know somebody don't get paid good enough, bring them down here and let's feed them. We put out about 3,500 plates a month. And it's, it's good. This is a good church. How many people satisfied with this church? Amen. Amen. Why can't we get, get some more people? We got a crowd Sunday. Campers on mission come down. Why can't why can't we fill this church up every Wednesday, every Sunday, every night? We can do it. They come. Well, just, just keep on. Just keep staying on. Just keep staying on when they come. The devil has the power to blind you. He makes you see things in the way that it really is. Let me tell you something. God is up here trying to pour his blessings down on you. A lot of us is trying to bring God down on our level. We can't do that. We need to, we never gonna get there, but we need to strive to get to his level. One day when he comes, or you die and you go to heaven, you will be up there with him. I want to see him. I want to see his hands. I want to see his side. I want to see his feet. I want to see him. I'm probably going to fall down at his feet. And I just, I don't understand people. I don't understand. Why do we choose to do bad? Because the devil has power to blind you. You think you you think you're doing something when you're doing drugs? All you're doing is, is drag. All, all you let me tell you something. You can take meth, shoot it, or smoke it. You pumping a straight devil in your life. And then when he weakens your mind, he does all kind of stuff. People shoot people. people. Look, read the news, man. It's crazy. Drugs is about took over. I mean, listen to me. Drugs are going to ruin this country. <laughs> if we don't get out here and work this thing and together as a church, this ain't my church. I'm just a pastor here. This is your church. It's your church. It's all of you's church. It's your church. If you see something going on right here, you should handle it. If you don't want to handle it and don't want to get involved, come tell me. I ain't ratting. That's, that's upholding your church. Well, I don't rat on nobody. 
But if you can't tell on somebody for disrespecting God's house, you ain't much of a man. Or a woman. Anybody that brings drugs in this church walks through the doors with them. I feel sorry for you. There's something, the wrath of the Lord is coming down on you. We've had a problem with men and women taking men out of the program. I feel sorry for you. Because wrath's coming your way. There's something bad. It's bad. You don't interfere with God's work. Sometimes you get in the way. You jump up in the air and you get in the way. God ain't going to lie because God sent people down here to do their program. He sends people down here to learn about the Lord and I'm going to teach you about it. I'm going to teach you the Word and I'm going to teach you the truth. And I ain't going to read it off a book. I'm going to read it from my heart. It says all the words in me. Yeah. I got the Word wrote in my heart. Because God saved me and I'm proud. Because I used to be a junkie shooting dope every day. Couldn't eat. I, I, hey, I stay up 14 days, work me up a couple of lab over, when I finally pass out, I wake up. That's sick. That's sick. You talking to a preacher here that's been there. I ain't read nothing. I've been there exactly where everybody else has been. And it ain't cool. And I ain't bragging about it. I'm just being honest with you. I'm telling you how sick I was. I got a picture right here. Has anybody seen this picture? Who ain't, who ain't seen this picture? I want y'all to look at this. Pass that around. Look at me now and look at me then. Now you can look at me and you can see the picture. I was in bad shape. Strung out. <coughs> Listen to me. Everybody in here has got a hurt, a habit, and a hang up that you covering up. I ain't got them. I can sit up here and tell you I got them and I'm a pastor. You got one. Because I do. <laughs> But I want you to know that God loves you. Let me get a law call. Now listen to me. Real men, a lot of times the hardest thing I've ever had to do was step out and walk up to the altar and pray. But after you do it one time, it gets easy. And if you'll walk out and pray to God, we ain't going to put your hands on you. I might walk by you and pray over you. <clears throat> but God will change your life. See you, Shannon. Shannon, see you Sunday, Friday.
Holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb. You want to be redeemed? Step out. Go get you some. I promise you it works. I promise you it works. Father God, I pray for each and every person that's at this altar. I pray that you'll touch their need. I pray that you'll take their hurt, their habits, their hang-ups. Lord, I pray that you'll move in their lives. Lord, I've seen so many people change by walking up here and getting on their knees and praying. Lord, I pray that you'll touch them in a, in a mighty way. Lord, I pray for the church. I pray for the church, the whole church. The ones that's scared to come up, the ones that ain't got the, what you call it, to get up. You know what I'm talking about. Be a man. Step out and get a make a change in your life.
Father God, we we'll come to you today, Lord, with a humble heart. Lord, we thank you for the service tonight. Lord, we thank you for the food. Lord, I pray that you'll bless the hands that fed that made it. Lord, most of all, I pray for the people of this church. Lord, there's some people that here and here is hurting. It's hurts habits and hang-ups kill us. It's like a time bomb fixing to explode. And Lord, I pray that you'll deal with each and every one of them. And Father, I love you tonight. Lord, I pray that you'll touch this church, bless this church, have your will and your way in this church because this is your church and you run it. And Lord, we just do what you ask. And Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for all that you do. Lord, I pray for the prayer boards that you'll touch each prayer, this, this, each name that's pinned on. We don't know what the situation is, but you do. And Lord, I just love you tonight. Give you the praise, give you the honor, give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.